How is AI changing what you do? Well, um, you know, we're an analytics company and we've been at it for many years. We use neural nets and machine learning and other forms of AI in, in some of our products, um, but not all of our products. And, you know, it's because we serve banks, financial institutions, heavily regulated by fair lending laws and regulations. And so there's limits to where and when and how you can use AI. Um, where it's most useful for us is in our Falcon fraud business, where we are the largest player in credit card fraud detection. And so we've been been using it there for quite a long time. Um, on the uh, on the underwriting side, I would say that it's going to take longer before AI really works its way in, because we have um, we you know we we just have some challenges there with yeah, the regulation. Why is that? that why is it? The, why the, is it? Why is it more challenging? That's interesting. The, you know, the regulators who are focused on fair lending um, want to make sure that they understand how the models work, make sure that there's not a lot of bias, um, make sure that, uh, that that people aren't being discriminated against in the algorithms that are being used to evaluate their credit worthiness. And so there's a lot of rules about transparency and, and objectivity and, and the science around it. Um, and so we, you know, obviously we comply with those rules to make sure that our, our banking customers are in compliance. Um, there are, you know, there are some interesting opportunities. We wind up using, we use generative AI for synthetic data, so that helps us in, in building things. Um, we have patents in this area where we have uh, applied blockchain to um, to AI, and what that lets you do, you know, because of the immutability of the blockchain mm -hmm. um, and, and the ability to understand where and when and how things occurred in this ledger, we can go back and understand what's going on in the model building. And so as we build our models, we leverage blockchain to do it. We have an Ethereum-based ledger to do it. So I, I was interested, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong here, about how your business works. In other words, you're the provider of the analytical software to a, a TransUnion or uh, Equifax, Experian or whatever it's called now, and, and to other other uh, people in the credit world. That's number one. And in terms of your bu business where you're doing credit card or, or loan security, I assume it's the same thing. You're not actually, you're selling analytics or software to those people who are touching the consumers, right? In other words, you're that not- That is exactly it. Got it, okay. No, that's exactly it. We're, mm -hmm. We are in the analytics business, not the data business. And so what happens is, you know, if, if if a lender wants to understand whether a consumer is likely to repay a loan, uh, then you know they'll they'll pull the credit file from the credit bureau and they'll ask for a FICO score. And what the FICO score does is it it measures the propensity of a consumer to repay debt. That's um that's an algorithm built on top of the credit credit card payment data that's housed at the credit file at the credit bureaus. Mm -hmm. And and um it's you know if there was a single thing that you looked at to understand if someone's going to pay you back in the future, what you'd look at is have you paid me back in the past? And and that's the credit bureau, the credit files. Now we're always looking for additional data that has some caloric and predictive value that, that can improve the decision. And that's where our software comes in. Our software can ingest much more than just the data at the credit bureau. Our software ingests any and all data, first-party data, third-party data, the credit bureau data. And on the basis of all that and applying a lot of fancy analytics, we get to a, a yet more sophisticated decision. Me, but both our scores and software are aimed at, at evaluating credit consumer 